Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I am going to show you my absolute perfect gift. Now I'm making a lot of these for Christmas this year, but I don't want to make this a Christmas video. So I'm going to show you how I make these for regular gift giving as well. Now I have a piece of a craft cardstock here. This is the Lawn Fawn Craft Cardstock. I'm going to cut this piece four and a quarter inches wide. Then I'm going to score at two and a half inches, then six and three quarter inches, and then 10 and one quarter inches. Now this is going to mean that the center piece here of our panel is going to be a four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch square. And then the top flap is going to be two and a half inches, and the bottom flap is going to be three and a half inches. Now these measurements mean Honestly, nothing if you don't want them to. It actually doesn't matter. All I tend to do when I'm doing this, depending on which size paper I'm working with, is make sure that the center panel is going to be a square. So because I cut the paper four and a quarter wide so that I could get two uh, from each piece of paper, that meant that I did the center four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then I like the top flap to be just slightly shorter than the bottom flap. So I'm going to make four of these today, and um, I'm just gonna show you a couple of different options for how I go about decorating these. This is such a simple idea and I want to show you a couple of tips that I have. First of all, I tend to pick out a gorgeous little paper pad and this one today is the Urban Garden by Paper Rose. A six by six inch paper pad including all of these sentiments ready to go. All of the papers are double sided. There are three each of 12 different designs. So there's 18 pieces of patterned paper in here which just means that all of these are going to coordinate nicely. We're going to be able to create some gorgeous little gift with these, but just wait, I want to show you a couple of things that will make this easy as well. Now, as I said, these, part of the reason why I love a uh, paper pad like this, it has my sentiments ready to go. I don't need to stamp anything. Everything coordinates, the colors, the fonts, all those good, lovely things. Now, all I do here, and this is mainly so I can get uh, as many pieces as I can out of this paper, but I'm going to leave a little border of the craft cardstock so I'm going to cut this four inches wide and then that means the top piece here is going to be uh, two and a quarter and then this part here is going to be three and a quarter and then I will leave the um, the other part are going to be white and that means that the center part will be four by four inches and then I will do another one for down the bottom which is going to be four by three and a quarter. Basically, I take off a quarter of an inch so that it leaves a nice border all around. So simple. Whatever your measurements are, take off a quarter of an inch and that will leave a gorgeous border. Then I like to use the corner chomper or a corner rounder just for a sort of more polished, finished look. You absolutely can skip this step. There's lots of gorgeous little corner rounders out there. I went through a few of them. Uh, I must admit that were sort of cheaper ones, uh, mainly because I wasn't ready to make the investment, but I did buy this one a couple of years ago and I have been grateful for it and I definitely haven't wanted to go back. It is a sturdy, great machine. Now, as for putting this all together, I just use some liquid glue, not too much, um, but it is going to be okay because we are using the craft cardstock. It's pretty heavy weight, so it's going to be just uh, fine when we're adding the liquid glue. If you're unsure about this, then you can just use some dry adhesive like a tape runner or um, some double-sided tape. A roll of that is going to work perfectly fine. But using the liquid glue, as usual, means that you can wiggle it around and get it in exactly the right place. So I will explain exactly why I put the pieces where I put them in just a minute. But I quite like that it has the little peak of white up the top there. And then I'm going to add in my uh, colored pieces on the front and the top. So this piece is going to go nicely here. I always check, <laughs> always check before I glue that I actually have my measurements right. I always make sure that it's fitting the way that I want it to because um, there have been many, many a time, raise your hand if there has been a time as well, it'll make me feel better, that you come to put it down and you think, what on earth was I measuring? Where did I go so wrong in my measurements? Um, so anyhow, I have got these two bits that go one up the top. 
Now, by all means, go ahead and stamp yourself a sentiment. I am going to use one from the inside of this pack. These are all very inspirational, beautiful little things. There's also happy birthdays, thank yous, um, all the good things. But I want to show you a tip how I go about closing these because in the past, I have used uh, magnets, very, very thin, tiny little magnets. Now, this is good and great, but it does mean I kind of have to hide them. It gets a little bit bulky and honestly, they get really expensive if I'm going to make a lot of them. Now, I do have some members uh, in my household this year and some family, some friends who I'm intending to give some gift cards to um, just because I think that's what they are in need of this year. They come to an age where that's what they want, you know, all sorts of lovely reasons. And so I will be giving something similar to this. And I wanted to show you a couple of quick tips. So here I am doing the sentiment. I had already glued it and then decided that I wanted to round the corner. So this one has glue on it and then I have my nice little backing piece the same with the craft card stock so that everything matches nicely. I'm just cutting my edges to make sure they actually look a little bit straighter and then I will again use the corner rounder to go around all of it. Now as for the closure of them, I actually use glue dots but there's a trick to using them. So I have half of this sentiment here covered in adhesive, just the top half and on the bottom half underneath this is how I'm going to close it now when it comes to a glue dot so I put the glue dot down for example if you are using a gift card like this one here is a hotel card it's an old one I'm not using it but this is just an example of the same size so I pop it on just like normal on that side and give it a little press and it adheres there. But then I'm going to touch this a whole lot of times with my hand, my finger. I don't tend to use my um, jersey or my pants or anything because I don't want there to be fibers on there. I think that's a bit weird, but I want it to be much, much less sticky. So the bottom part down there is where I will write and then the middle part is where I put my gift card. But I always think it's kind of a shame when you... Uh, have to rip something to open it um something like this that's so pretty and so if you do this technique here so i've got the glue dot on there you can see it's nice and shiny now go for gold and stick your finger on that thing a lot of times to make sure we get rid of a lot of the stick now we definitely i, I always think it's such a shame when it rips so we don't want it to rip but we do want it to hold closed and so the same with the gift card i always think it's such a shame if they have to rip it off so that's why i definitely sort of use my finger to take away some of that beautiful stick just so that we don't destroy it and it may even have a chance of being reused depending on how the person cho chose to uh, gift it or how I go about gifting it. These ones here, I'm going to make some of these. Uh, I think I'm going to give this kind of style for Christmas. It's not very Christmassy, but I do really love it. So um, you could choose it and you could also use it for any occasion. It's certainly not Christmassy. This is the Gingham Love 2 paper pad. I absolutely love this. Um, I love the gingham. It's sort of like a distressed gingham, but then on the back, it's like a sweater. It reminds me of um, a sweatshirt or a sweater pattern or something. And it's so real. The texture is so real, it makes you feel like touching it. So I really love that. Um, but I do love the gingham as well. So as usual, it's folded exactly the same. I've got my two pieces of white. The bottom piece here is where I generally am going to um, write my message or if I'm going to stamp, I will stamp a message in there if I don't want to write quite as much. And then the top bit here, this is usually where I stick a gift card or something of the sort. You may want to stamp, uh, pop the gift card up a little bit higher and then you can stamp a message like a Merry Christmas or a Happy Birthday or a Congratulations. Um, you can stamp that kind of underneath the gift card. So it leaves plenty of room depending on um, different shops have different sized gift cards and sort of all sorts so that's what I tend to find uh, leaves a good amount of room for it so I put the light gray gingham on the bottom here and then I've got another piece already to go on the top and then honestly you can find anything in your stash that can be the closure it absolutely doesn't have to be a sentiment so for this one we're not going to use a sentiment at all now I just really liked this darker darker gray here and I wanted a strip of this but I wasn't sure so I'm going to cut it now and I think I just measured out a couple of inches or one and a half inches or so I wasn't really um there was no reason as to why I made it that width I just wanted to include it I thought it would look nice perhaps going down the middle just to break up some of that lighter gray but I'll see I'll think on it soon 
So for this one, I'm going to use the mini big bow stamp set. There is just one gorgeous little bow in here, and I'm going to use some jewels uh, paper, some colored cardstock from the jewels set. Now this one I am, as I said, going to give for Christmas, so I'm choosing some greens, but um, I'm, it's not going to be over Christmassy at all. In fact, I think you could be mistaken. This could be for any any occasion at all. But I'm taking some Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I'm stamping it out on both of them. At this point, I thought I might do some paper piecing of the two bows together. But I do change my mind on that. So I add a little bit of uh, clear embossing powder over both of them. This just means, um, well, I had a little plan and I just wasn't too sure at this point. So I'm going to melt that and it's going to come back nice and dark shiny gorgeous black so at this point as I said I still thought I was doing both but a change of mind whilst I was heat embossing I'm actually just going to do some shading but I'm being very um pretty lazy about this this is the fake plant um dye ink I didn't want to use a distress oxide because that would go have that sort of whitish tinge on top of the colored cardstock and I didn't want that so this is just going to be a nice crisp dye ink and I'm using just the edge of that other piece there too as a very very quick mask to uh, add a little bit of shading and shadow and then this bit here I decided to get a little bit of mint tape and just make those little uh, pieces where the ribbon has been folded um that would naturally be inside sort of of the bow I'm going to make that bit a little bit darker as well and this is going to save me paper piecing I'm not sure which one would have taken me more time but this didn't take too long at all and I was more than happy with it it was very easy and very very quick masking I must say um, not specific at all but with a little bit of that I think this bow ends up looking pretty good when I end up fussy cutting it out I'm using my little cutter bee fussy cutting scissors these are great I recommend everybody have a pair of um, really tight uh, pointed scissors I think these are great for all those little curves and little spaces when you are fussy cutting I go around this with my black marker since I have stamped in black I want to make my fussy cutting look better than it actually is and this is just a really quick little tip that you can do to make it look a whole lot better I have some double-sided adhesive on the back here and I'm going to line this up in the middle now I think my brain was getting put off by the uh, gingham pattern so I used my Tim Holtz this is a zero scented ruler and this helps me out all the time it saves me from doing a lot of maths so I'm using this to get this exactly in the middle not that it really matters you could definitely eyeball this but exactly in the middle and there is adhesive all the way up so I just need to make sure it doesn't stick at the top then I will cut this off and by some lucky lucky uh, coincidence this piece that I have cut off literally perfectly fits right up the top so I will carry on that pattern all the way through and I'm happy with that then this little bow is going to go down there on the front so you absolutely don't have to have a sentiment and of course remember that you can still uh, stamp the sentiment inside of your little gift so this is just my absolute go-to when I'm giving a gift card or some money or you know a voucher towards something this just is a really nice way to include it and still have something to give so I hope that you have enjoyed this video I'm going to show you the whole set that I made uh, at the beginning um, in just a second as well to go uh, you could also give it away as a gift I suppose as a set but I hope that you have enjoyed this video I hope that you found it useful if you have and you would like to support my channel I will leave a link down below to the buy me a coffee website I would be very grateful if you could uh, support the channels that I have here on YouTube I also have a Facebook group if you would like to come and join us it's called come crafting with Natasha and we would love to see you there where you can post all of your makes and your creations and things we have a an amazing an amazing group of people we are so so lucky um, and you can see here all of those gorgeous little glue dots just open and close they keep it really nice and flat they keep everything put together you can see when I turn it on its side that there's no gaping and it sort of keeps everything really flat. I like that um, it's just a nice finished look without having to put a belly band or a ribbon or something around the center. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with this little set that we've created. Thank you so much for joining me and I truly look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. We'll see you then. Bye.